Does it um, plan to serve all eight years? <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not going to get ahead of the president. That's something for him to decide. Not going to go there. That was White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday, refusing to say whether President Biden intends to serve a full term if he is reelected. She's now walking back those comments, writing in part on Twitter, quote, I wanted to be sure that I did not go into 2024 more than is appropriate under the law. But I can confirm that if reelected, Biden would serve all eight years. Under the law, former President Obama, meanwhile, uh, apparently supporting Biden's reelection, tweeting, quote, let's get to work. I don't know if that's actually a support, but let's get to work. Joining us now is the 2024 presidential contender, entrepreneur and author of the new book, Capitalist Punishment. Vivek Ramaswamy is with me now. Vivek, it's great to see you. It's good to see you, Maria. So your whole platform is you're a business guy. Yeah. You're coming in and a business guy can fix some of these issues, right? I want to get your yeah. take on that. But first, what do you make of that? Is this the worry that Biden is not going to be able to finish out eight years and Kamala Harris is going to be our president? Well, I think the biggest farce is the idea that it is Biden running for re-election at all. Forget whether he's going to finish eight years. He wasn't even really the one who started the eight years. He's a front man for the managerial class. They have put him up as a puppet that they can control. And so his cognitive deficits, that's not a bug. That's a feature to them. And so I think once we see through that, the rest of it starts to make sense. It almost doesn't matter to them who sits in the White House as long as it's someone that his handlers and the managerial class can control. Susan Rice stepped down. Well, my guess is she's going to be playing a big role. Pay attention to who's pulling the strings, not who the puppet is. That's Joe Biden's exactly the puppet. what I was thinking. I'm like, why did Susan Rice step down the day before he's announcing his reelection? Is she going to run a campaign for Michelle Obama? Is she going to run herself? Is she not in this party of Joe Biden? You know, it's more inconvenient for some of those people to be the front man. So they're just pulling the strings behind the strings of the puppet. So Joe Biden's the front man for actually driving an agenda of the administrative class and even the administrative state. That's really what's going on. So what are you going to do? You you want to be president 2024 yes. what's your platform well domestic policy first of all is end the administrative state I view the administrative state as fundamentally unconstitutional and we can't just reform these agencies top down put Betsy DeVos on top of the Department of Education no I've said we're going to shut it down, Department of Education, but countless other administrative agencies. And I think that breathes the lifeblood back into our constitutional republic. Three branches of government, not four. Mm. That also helps unlock the economy. And Maria, everyone will talk about spending cuts to tax increases. I think there's a better way. GDP growth in this country. We don't talk about that enough well, anymore. Well, there's no growth plan, Vivek. You know that. Well, I have What's a growth the plan. growth plan? What's your growth plan? It's Get actually, us back to growth. It's actually, we can grow our way out of our problems. Unshackle the U.S. energy sector from the climate cult. Put people back to work. We have this culture of laziness spreading like an epidemic across the country. Okay. And then reform the Federal Reserve. Keep in mind, until the late 70s, we were at 4 plus percent GDP growth in this country. Yeah. I think we can get back there if we take on the obstacles head on. And that's well, what I'm doing. Look, uh, President Trump had a 4 percent economy. Let's face it. And the, and the former president weighed in on the Republican primary this week. He's talking about the primary debates. He's suggesting he might not attend the primary debates. He, he wrote this on Truth Social. When you're leading by seemingly unsurmountable numbers and you have hostile networks with angry Trump and MAGA hating anchors asking the questions, why subject yourself to being libeled and abused? Well, here's what I would say is I was actually really disappointed in the DNC when they're shutting down debate in their own party. They're not hosting debates. I criticize them for it. But I think the Republican Party should be the party of free speech and open debate, practicing what we preach and defining the agenda. And Murray, I've said this since a long time. No candidate is going to relish being on the debate stage with me. I don't think that's true of Trump, DeSantis or anybody else. But I think that is going to be crucial for defining the agenda. And I'm going to come without sparing any kid gloves on that debate. Well, stage. Well, you've either. got great ideas about defining the agenda and about getting us back to growth. You know growth. You're a business guy. What I want to ask you is something I asked Asa Hutchinson. Sure. What are you going to do about corruption, Vivek? OK, one of the things one of the reasons that the Trump supporters like Trump is because he wasn't afraid. He took on that corruption. We see it in plain sight. We saw it with the Russia collusion hoax. We saw it with the Hunter Biden laptop. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm taking it to the next level. I mean, here's the difference is when an Anthony Fauci or a Merrick Garland or James Comey, the next time they misbehave illegally, you don't just complain about it to the press. You have to fire them. You have to fire the managerial industrial complex around them. And I will absolutely apply the rule of of law actually evenly. I've also said even on small things that so public mistrust, take the Jeffrey Epstein client list, 
publish that. We want full transparency. We won't use this corrupt administrative state to protect its own. That's what it means by actually leading the executive branch like a true executive. And I understand that, Maria, is that if somebody works for me and I can't fire them, that means they don't work for me. It means I work for them. Yeah. That's the way it was run under many presidents, even under Trump. I refuse to stand by as a bystander. I will actually run the executive branch of the government. Trump needed to fire some people a lot yes. sooner than he did, and he needed to hire, have better personnel decisions. Amen. And I think yeah. that I'm going to learn from that and build on that foundation, take that America First agenda further than Donald Trump ever did, because I'm doing it based on first principles, moral authority. Nobody's going to stop so us. So what do you make about the FBI sitting on the Biden laptop now for five years and counting? House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer joined me on Sunday Morning Futures. He broke a lot of news. He told me even more members of the Biden family will likely be exposed for having taken money from foreign entities, including communist China. Watch this. Right now we have nine, but I believe in the end that number will be at least 12. I mean, this was the Biden family uh, influence peddling scheme. And, and, you know, when people say, well, they were involved in ventures around the world, I haven't found a legitimate business on the Biden end, Maria. No legitimate business. So, in other words, they're getting money for something. What were they getting money for? What are you going to do about it? This is downright corrupt. But part of the reason is our administrative police state is also corrupt. So I've said you can't reform that FBI top down. You have to shut it down and build something from scratch to take its place. It is still the J. Edgar Hoover building, Maria, that people walk into every day. This is J. Edgar Hoover's FBI still. And I think whether this you're on the left or the right, you should not want a corrupt police state that makes up the law as it goes along. You need them to actually enforce the laws as they exist. Well, well part of I'm it is deliver that. people go to Washington, they think they can stay there for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Do you want term limits? Oh, absolutely. So, okay. but, but the term okay. limits that are Good. key is in the administrative state, in the bureaucratic class, not just the elected leaders, but the people who work for me in the bureaucratic yeah. class, that's where we need the term That'll bust up the deep state for oh, sure. Will. Vivek, your new book released this week. Congratulations. It's called Capitalist Punishment. How Wall Street is using your money to create a country you didn't vote for. Tell me more. Well, this exposes the ESG scam where the largest financial institutions like BlackRock and State Street are using the money of everyday citizens to vote for and advocate for environmental and social and political agendas at companies like Apple or Chevron that most Americans disagree with and which don't advance their best financial interests. Yeah. That is a scam. And so this is a book that exposes what's actually being done with your own money. I wrote this book before I knew I was going to run for president. I'm donating my personal proceeds to a nonprofit that's actually pursuing litigation against companies like American Express for their politicized practices. But I think this lifts the curtain. Once you see what's happening with your yeah. money, it's hard to unsee it. That's you're why gonna, I wrote the book. You're going to have to take on the Biden administration because they've got these ESG rules throughout government. Oh, and I'm going to fix that. A, a, all of it. Uh, Vivek, we're going to be watching your campaign. It sounds great. Thank you I, so I much. I appreciate that, Maria. Vivek Ramaswamy joining us. We'll be right back.